We're going to be talking about pick lists where all this stuff comes together. And yes, there's an S on the end because even if you are the number one seed, like 16 to 78 is used to, um, you really only have control over, you know, your first pick. And then it's, you know, who knows what's going to happen from there. So in terms of pick lists, um, leading up to actually having a set of lists that you're walking out onto the field with or listening to on a AirPod or whatever the kids use these days, um, what is the process like to, you know, get the pick list together. I know we talked about um, how you guys have these like epic uh, scouting <laughs> meetings really late into the night, but how big are your lists? How many lists do you have? Um, let's start with Katie. Uh, so I make the rule of your list. Ha our list has to be at least 24 teams long, preferably longer. Um, we've never made it all 24, but better to be prepared. And so, um, that's like the first part. How we make our pick list is, I haven't seen any other team do it this way, but I also have not seen how many other teams make their pick list. Um, I do, we give everyone a note card. So yeah, you can see in this picture that I think Tyler's about to post. Uh, we give every team gets a note card and we write their num number on it. Um, and then we write all the important statistics that we determined we want, like that we determined were important based off like what our Elim strategy would be. Um, and from there, we just start sorting. Uh, what's really nice is because we're doing it in this way with like note cards, it's really easy to rearrange like teams. And then also it's easy for a bunch of people to work on it at once. Um, which like I have been in situations where it's two people working on a pick list because there's just everything so bottlenecked uh, that I prefer this so much better because it's just so much faster. Uh, and one advantage to doing it with the note cards that we do is that when our scouts are going through it and they're like, oh man, this data does not seem right. Um, because we had so many people working on the problem, people could rewatch matches and update everything. Um, and like, so, oh, go on. Oh no, go ahead. I didn't know if you were done or not. I'm done. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Brennan, how do you guys determine your pick list? And is it different between say, you know, your district events and then when you get to provincial champs? Uh, yeah, the, the process is the same for every single event. Uh, we try and keep it unified. Once again, like, like Katie, the biggest thing that we need to do at the start of the pick list meeting is clarify how we're going to reach our goals for this event. For some teams, it might be win. For some teams, it might be make finals, get the wild card spot. Um, you know, figuring out what kind of attributes we want from a team first. Uh, then the next thing that we do to keep it uh, moving quickly is we quickly sort all the different teams in the um, in the event, uh, spending like 30 seconds on them, uh, just roughly sorting them into like tiers of like amazing, good, like average, not so great, and bottom tier. Uh, and then take those tiers. What we do is we take the the top tier uh, and, and you know sort sort through that as much as we can until we have a couple teams and then we bring the next tier in and and move on from there. Uh, so we find that that helps us uh, stay focused on a specific set of teams and and it also gives us some context by going through the entire field to kind of give us an idea of you know like what kind of teams are going to be available uh, later on in rounds uh, you know where where's the cutoff of like good and and weaker teams that kind of stuff. So Carl, how do you guys approach um, your pick lists? And usually you are in the number one seed, but this past year at Champs, we saw something incredibly unusual where you were not the number one seed. Like how, so how was that pick list process of developing it at Champs this past year different from say any other event you've gone to or you've seeded first? Um, it wasn't that much different. So the main focus of what we're doing is for a second pick. Um, so this year at Champs, um, we discussed like, the possible scenarios of um, what teams could be picked if we accepted or declined, what would happen. Um, we went through all those scenarios, and then we basically figured out um, what we would do in each of those scenarios. Um, and we spent a few minutes on that, and then we moved on to the, the main focus, which is our second pick. Um, and so we have a pretty comprehensive process for that. Um, so if, it, if we're at Champs, we try to work with our first pick if we know who they are, or our Alliance captain. Um, and then the first thing we do is we just take teams off the list. Um, so any teams that we had a hard time working with um, are really unreliable, that sort of thing, we just drop them off of our list. Um, and then we go through each of the teams 
and we take off teams that have low reliability or low scoring that aren't going to fall into the top 30. Um, that way, we're just removing teams off our list so we have less data to look at. Um, the next thing we do is we sort by a composite score. Uh, basically, what it does is it takes um, the scoring, like, there, it takes in a bunch of different data fields, um, so like the number of cargo they score, the number of panels they score, um, if they're able to start on the second level. And basically, how many, for usually it's how many points they'd be able to score or de-score, um, so how much they're able to contribute. And then we sort by that, and so that gives us a general sort, um, and that gives us the start of our pick list. So it's sort of in general order of what we're looking for in our pick list. Um, and then from there, we just go down the pick list, uh, and we compare each team to the ones above it, and we see if it should be moved up or stay where it is. So Arjun from FTC9794 wants to know, how do you deal with teams that only focus on OPR um, or other statistics when your statistics, ooh, um, when your statistic is low and you want to sell yourself for something, probably picking? So when you're trying to market yourself to other teams, I guess, that um, are going to be able to pick you if you're not in a picking position. Brennan, what, do you, what advice do you have? Or how do you deal with teams that only focus on OPR? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to selling yourself and selling teams, um, the best thing you can do is uh, prove or show wh how you've improved something or talk about some some uh, something that you fixed on your robot or maybe you have an autonomous that's working. Sell with new things and don't wait until just before the alliance selection because there's no matches, you know, practice field time is limited. Uh, just, you know, before before alliance selections with a few matches left to go say hey you know we've had been having these issues i know we might be low on your list would you check out our next match we think we fixed this problem for this reason uh that's way more attractive than a team coming up to me being like oh well we score you know this many cargo per match and blah 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 it's like well i care about what my scouts have to say not so much what <laughs> you guys think you score right so you know showing showing your improvement showing what issues you had and and that is a good way to go mm -hmm. and a good follow-up question from uh swami dm is when in a competition is it acceptable to start quote or to quote show off abilities that might not or that might be of interest to an alliance captain even if it may not be the best strategic interest of your alliance should alliance captains ask team to sh teams to show off abilities if those abilities might cause an alliance to lose a match Katie, what are your thoughts on this? I think by, so in a regional at least, uh, I think districts follow a similar timeline. Uh, Saturday morning is probably around the time when the rankings are getting a little bit more solidified and generally people can't change by more than 10 spots, um, especially as matches go on. And so Saturday morning is when I would go around and ask teams, hey, what do you want to see? Um, because asking me, am I on your list? <laughs> not useful. Uh, showing me your data, like Brennan said, not useful. Um, and I've, I've heard it from someone else saying, like, ask, ask the good teams, what do you want to see? Um, and go from there. Uh, as far as working it in your alliance strategy with your alliance partners, I have no good solution for that. Um, I think at some point you just have to either, like, is there a benefit to show, like, being a good alliance partner? Or, like, is there a benefit to winning? Um, if you're working with a top eight team and you're saying, no, I'm going to go off script because I want to impress other top eight teams, probably not a great, not, not a great call. Um, but if you're with other teams who are in the bottom 60, like bottom of the event, do what you got to do. I can agree with that. So we're going to be starting our second giveaway. Um, and again, team 971 wants to remind you that you have until the end of Wednesday to RSVP, <laughs> um, <laughs> for their Spartan series workshop. So. Um, if you can't find it, or if you want to find out more, go to frc971.org. And um, we're going to explain how to win the beanie, because everybody loves beanies. Um, the keyword is <laughs> because we can. <laughs> that's three words, because we can. Because apparently that's the new FRC 971 team motto. And I think that is incredibly accurate. Um, looking at their robots in the past few years. Um, so if you want to win that beanie, which I definitely do, um, type in because we can into the chat. Um, so we're going to be going over a few more questions here. So 
This one I'm pretty excited to ask. So Griffin6334 wants to know, how much does team history and chemistry influence your pick? So Carl, what do you think about that? Because I know um, you guys see a lot of the same, you know, friendly teams that I would say like Corsetto is very close with. Um, how often does the, you know, history with your team and another team influence, you know, if you're kind of on the fence about eh, this one or that one? What do you think? Um, if, it, if we know a team to be consistently reliable, if they're really good at fixing problems, um, if they're really organized, that does put them up on our list um, for both first pick and second pick, um, not just for like pairwise comparisons uh, between two teams. Um, but if they're significantly better and we, we know that they're organized and they're going to be reliable, we'll move them up higher because reliability is really important to us. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else have an opinion on that? Yeah, basically the same as Carl there. Mm-hmm. And so Ryan2502 wants to know, what is the best way to make sure your representative makes the right pick? <laughs> Text, phone call, whiteboard, shouting to them. What is your team's kind of approach to ensuring accuracy? Because there's nothing worse than <laughs> seeing the reaction from another team being like, no, that wasn't the right one. Uh, so Katie, what do you think is the most direct, like accurate way to make sure that your um, alliance selection person actually picks the right team? Uh, first off, send out the right alliance rep. Sometimes uh, <laughs> there's a person who, by whatever the rules are, is the rep, but you know in your heart of hearts that they would be a horrible alliance rep because uh, they might go off script or whatever. So send out the right person. Um, send them out. Prepare them for, like, worst-case scenario, which is both, like, who we want to pick or who we want to say yes to, like, doesn't happen but also for what if there's no cellular data or what if you don't want to use a whiteboard side note whiteboards are the worst you know the worst <laughs> feeling is writing no on a whiteboard and having the whole audience know that like before you even said no it just feels weird um also <laughs> just we use uh slack on 1296 at least uh 253 use discord i don't remember um we use Slack and like we just confirm everything via that of like, you know, our person on the field will be like, we want this one. Does that seem right? And we'll be like, yeah, that seems right. Or um, at Champs in 2019, uh, one of our, our field rep was on the field and uh, one of the people in the stand sent a message like, hey, this team that we played with a bunch that's been really good, they're not even taken yet. Um, and so that was a way that like the re field rep could talk to the other person and be like, okay, we want this team. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, if you can, please send your field rep with like some way to access data because you can't talk to your alliance partners about what next picks you should make if you have no data to talk about. That is some really good advice. Carl, what do you suggest is the best, most accurate method of uh, conveying information to your rep? Um, we just we just always have a list. Um, so if there's different scenarios, we just have a list of all those things. Um, and it's always someone who is in the our draft night meeting the meet and involved with the pick list. Um, but we just send them with the list and we don't modify it last minute. That is brilliant. Um, and we're gonna go with another question. Aiden, I'm like leaning in like I'm really old. <laughs> Aiden Neely uh, wants to know what changes to your team scouting would you make if you had the resources? Um, Brennan, what about you guys? Yeah, so one of the big things that we're starting to work on is uh, an app, so fully electronic, which I think is the biggest thing uh, for us to minimize some of the human error and, you know, live updating is nice as well. So that's for, for us. Mm -hmm. um, Katie, what about you with 253? Aiden, you're on my team. Um, uh, I think the biggest thing would just be making a more robust uh, – input field right now um the way we do it is a little clunky and i think we could streamline it and carl anything that you would want to improve from your ridiculous google sheet scouting system um for us we already have the resources to do what we want to do right now we're mm -hmm. working on redoing what we did last year making it simpler and focusing on the things that matter the most in terms of uh for a pick list and match strategy amazing all right and prawn chavila wants to know to oh wait we already like went over something like that no, we're not going to do that question. Um, oh, wait, yeah. No, the one below was the one that I was going to say. Anyway, um, so PJ, 
Well, I guess I'll go with this one. Um, we're going to only limit this response to very <laughs> minimal from people. So PJ wants to know, which principles of horse racing do you consider the most important when planning your pick list? Katie, go ahead. Favorite color? Uh, Brennan. Uh, the horse height, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and Carl? Uh, I don't understand the question. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> the kid from Citrus who knows everything doesn't understand the question, so that explains it. Um, so we're going to draw for the winner of the beanie. I hope it's me. It's probably not going to be me. So, Tyler, why don't you go ahead and draw? And for those of you in chat, real quick, make sure you type in because we can. Yeah, it, you know, Christine, the unfortunate thing is since you're the active host in the show, you don't get the win no matter what. The, yeah, I we know call it, it the sucks. Mike Stark rule, by the way. So, uh, and so Mike's yeah. won stuff. It's <laughs> yeah, but, but we made him redraw. Uh, if uh, if he's one on show. So because we can, what's the keyword? Thanks again to 971 for the sweet giveaways, uh, by the way. And if you're a team, if you want to give away some stuff, if you got something you want to help promote on the show, we'd love helping support teams uh, and giving their message out. But, hey, you know, a couple of giveaways go a long way here as well. Uh, so the winner of this, hey, guess what? The drought is over. A subscriber has won. Aristo, uh, well, Aristop <laughs> Doggo, something like that, uh, is a I'll subscriber. Go. Thank you so much. Uh, subscribing since today and following since today so lots of rigged emotes in chat we have rigged it for another subscriber once again rigged one for the subscriber make sure you do message me uh, so we can get you uh that beanie so congratulations to that thanks again 971 for the sweet giveaways today yeah those are pretty sweet um so real quick before we wrap up and i know tyler and i agreed to remove the segment but we're gonna give everybody like real quick short moment to do this um most memorable or crazy stressful uh, scouting moment on your team, either as a student or for everybody but Carl as a mentor. Um, Katie, go. Most stressful or exciting or memorable <laughs> moment. Uh, most frustrating was saying yes to a team we should not have said yes to, and our pick list told us not to say yes. Uh, that sucked. And like everyone who was involved with that decision just felt horrible uh, because oh, we knew it so it was so bad. And Brennan, what about you? Uh, probably 2014 GTR East, where we picked up a really great third robot through practice field scouting and uh, managed to take out 1114 in uh, in 2014, where where the the finalists on Einstein. So that was exciting. That's pretty epic. And Carl, what about you? Uh, so Houston far in your sh oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Houston champs last year. Um, our battery ran out right before the end of quals. Um, we got a data export sent to our spreadsheet right before the laptop died. Um, but then we re realized the export was missing a couple, um, couple, couple of matches of data. Um, and so one of our developers plugged it into the wall while we were waiting for people from our pit to come. Um, they got it charged up, and then they were walking through the streets of Houston, um, fixing the the server and the calculations, and then getting the export right before it died again, um, and right before we started draft night. That's pretty epic. All right, so that's going to wrap up Roast and Robots tonight. So. Thank you for everybody for helping make this show possible. And a huge thank you to our guests tonight. It's been so cool to hear so much about everything that you guys do on your teams. Um, and real quick, um, I want to give you guys an opportunity to let the community know what you have going on. So, Katie, let's start with you. What do you have going on? And give us any plugs for your team or for yourself if you want to. Uh, 253 is awesome. Everyone should follow them on Instagram. They have, like, six Instagram accounts. Uh, and then a personal plug, if you like Gatsby's guest appearance, and he now has a speaker. Um, if you liked his guest appearance, you can follow him on Instagram uh, at Gatsby Paws. Doing that now. Um, and Carl, what about you? What is Citrus up to, and what do you have going on on the West Coast? Uh, we're currently working on our white paper for a 2019, 2019 system. Um, so it goes into great detail about all the technical aspects of our system. It shows you each of the different applications we use. Um, all the different calculations we use, and it also talks about the process we use to develop those things. Um, so we're releasing the 2019 white paper in September. All of our white papers are available at citruscircuits.org slash scouting. Uh, they're a really good resource to see how we make a scouting system, how we suggest making a scouting system. They go into a lot more depth about the topics we covered today, um, and I really encourage you to check it out. Definitely will do. And Brennan, what about you guys up in Waffle World? Yeah, so I just uh, we just put out a uh vod of one of the presentations specifically about scouting and strategy and kind of taking that whole process of data to you know 
end product of having a match strategy and executing that. So that's up on our YouTube channel. Uh, and as for the team, we're we're out doing a couple off-season events soon, so that'll be exciting as well. Pretty epic. Are there a million off-seasons in Ontario uh, like there are in New England, or is it like uh, there's only three, average actually. Amount? What? Yeah. Oh, I guess we're weird in New England and have too many to the point where there's just like not enough teams to actually go to them. So that's pretty awesome. I'm excited to see um, the Citrus stuff on their website, and I'm excited for sharing this with our scouting students. So um, fun fans, we rely on you to keep fun going. So please consider subscribing or donating bits, which I still don't understand, pledging your support on <laughs> our Patreon. So the most important thing that you can do is let others know about fun, which I think happens because there were over a hundred viewers tonight, which is pretty awesome. Um, there's a lot of shows like Roast and Robots. And if you want to keep on top of all of those shows, click the follow button. Um, we also have a Discord where you can join nearly 1,800 other people to talk after the show at discord.gg backslash first updates now. And don't, oh, forward slash, sorry, first updates now. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the occasional Snapchat takeover under first updates now. So, Tyler, let us know who helped support the show this evening. Yes, Christine mentioned we had uh, well over 100 concurrent viewers. I mean, we definitely had a few hundred watch today. So, thank you to everybody who did watch uh, live. Let's get some big shout outs here tonight. Uh, to Elan 9421 uh, with 16 months of Prime. Uh, Path Botter with a Prime sub. Uh, Tagan 4476, seven months of support. Thanks, Tagan. Electronica 1, 20 months, 21 months of support. Says, is this horse racing? Uh, C. McBride continuing to re up the tier two sub with 27 months support, asking if this is BattleBots and that we have such an educated audience. Uh, Rist of Doggo uh, with their prime sub Necro Creature, two months at tier one. Thank you. Uh, Ardonio, Ryan, buddy, he's back again. Back in my day, he said we scouted with paper and 31 <laughs> months of support. 31 months, man. Holy crap. Uh, Kings Bob's at Gaming with a Pride Sub. Mick last 17 months support. Thanks a lot. Uh, RCAT 51, 11 months support. Hackagen with 23 months says only one month away. Uh, Red Leader 342, 600 bits. And I know we've got some other people, uh, some benefits in there. Necro Creatures, some bits. And if we missed anybody tonight, sorry about that. Sometimes our uh, bot won't always catch everybody. But thank you, everybody, for helping keep uh, fun, loud, live, and independent. We'd love to produce shows for you uh, once we can Tuesdays for FRC, plus a bunch of other off seasons and the occasional FTC show. Make sure you check it all out as Christine mentioned, join our Discord and keep the conversation going. Yeah, and to comment on uh, the whole, like, back in my day we used paper. Back in my day, we weren't allowed to have cell phones down on the field during alliance selection. It should we still actually, be that way, by the way. Yeah, like, I remember in, my, in 2007, my senior year of high school, we were down on the floor at Champs, and, like, I was not even on the field. I was field side and had my cell phone, and I got yelled at and asked to leave. So... Times are different Good. now. Cell kids. phones make it so long. I'm sorry. I, I did R2OC a few weeks ago. It was the longest line selection because every single person was not prepared. And every single person had to wait for a phone call. Mm -hmm. Awful. Should not be that way. Mm -hmm. Rant over. Take, pack your AirPods up and kick it old school. So on behalf of myself and our producer, Tyler, um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. And thanks to our moderators in the chat. And we'll see you next time on Roast and Robots. And we'll talk to you then. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.